we got the approval around mid-afternoon on Wednesday, January 10th, that the SEC has officially approved all spot Bitcoin ETFs. There was 11 of them, including, of course, BlackRock, Grayscale, ARK, so on and so on. So that's the big news that came out around the afternoon. It's funny, it wasn't supposed to be until after trading hours. And then what happened was the approvals got put on the SEC website. So everyone started tweeting about it and sharing it. And then it got taken off the website. Everyone's like, well, wait a minute, is this fake? Did, was this true? Like what happened? Then the site crashed because too many people were going to the SEC website. It was a bit of a mess, just like what happened the day before, which we will get to. But anyway, we woke up this morning, Thursday, just less than 24 hours after the approvals. And all 11 are actually live to be traded. So you can actually buy these ETFs already. They are live and trading. Within the first, I think it was like half hour or something, we had over a billion dollars in trading across all of the ETFs. So pretty big numbers. There's a bunch of different numbers going out on Twitter right now. Some, I'm not sure how true they are. There was a tweet that said 2.3 billion. That was in like the first hour. Eric, who's the, the ETF bro, has said that this isn't true. I think it's more around like 1 to 1 1.8 if you include Grayscale. So anyway, whatever it is, it's a large sum. These are potentially going to break records this year. Let's see. The interesting thing about this ETF approval is it's the first ETF in history in which the underlying asset that the ETF holds has a limited supply. So what's interesting is like, let's say gold, for example, when the price of gold goes up, you can fund more of the mining, right? You have more money, it's more profitable. So you actually deploy more miners and you actually can find more gold. So the supply of gold goes up faster as the price goes up, right? And this is true of all commodities and everything that's in an ETF. Whereas Bitcoin, nothing changes. Doesn't matter how high the price goes, you cannot create more of this stuff. And so it's the first time we've had the ability for so much demand, it doesn't mean the demand's coming just because we have an ETF, but the pipes have widened significantly and yet the supply can never widen. And I think this is just a really, really cool concept that I think is going to play out over the next year or two and why I think Bitcoin is going to reach some pretty big numbers. So really, really exciting to just to kind of wrap your head around that. Let's continue on. There's a, a few more tweets here around the Bitcoin ETF. So a few things just to catch you up. This one was quite interesting. So after it was approved, Gary Gensler released a statement. Gary Gensler is the, the chairman of the SEC. He released a statement that was a little bit odd. So he just basically said, yeah, we've approved it, blah, blah, blah. But then he went into like details that normally, like they just would not do this. So he went in and he said, though we're merit neutral, I'd note that underlying the underlying assets in the metals ETPs or ETFs have consumer and industrial uses. Well, in contrast, Bitcoin is primarily a speculative volatile asset that's also used for illicit activity, including ransomware, money laundering, sanction evasion, and terrorist financing. While we approved and listing and trading of certain spot Bitcoin ETF shares today, we did not approve or endorse Bitcoin. Investors should remain cautious. This is just so weird. Like, this is unprecedented. Never have they done this. Been like, hey, we're going to list this ETF of gold, but by the way, gold can be used for illicit activity. And gold doesn't have a use case like, I don't know, copper does or whatever. Like weird for them to state that, but just, yeah, very interesting. They're still trying to take this like weird stance against crypto, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. They've approved it. There's going to be enough marketing out there from the Bitcoin world that what they say doesn't really matter. The other interesting that came out about Gary Gensler, he's so off and on, like he's writes the statement of, you know, doesn't approve of Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. But then we found out that the SEC actually had to take a vote for the CTF to actually be approved. There's five people that voted on this. Two, which were the Democrats, did not approve. Two, which were the Republicans, did approve. And so we were at a two versus two. And the final vote, the swing vote of the approval was none other than Gary Gensler, who approved it. So we won what? three to two. Isn't that unbelievable? So very interesting that happened. There's sort of speculation that Larry Fink and the boys over in the TradFi world have basically forced him, said, if you don't approve, you know, we're going to sue you and blah, blah, blah. Also in their statement, they talked about they kind of had to approve this because of the court case from Grayscale. So we actually owe a lot of the kudos to Grayscale for taking them to court and winning that because they were sort of the reason that this really became a thing this year. It was sort of like, it's probably not going to happen. Then Grayscale won, was it this summer? And all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're back, like, let's go. And then six months later, boom, we're live. So we got a lot of kudos to send over to Grayscale. Let me ask a, a couple clarifying questions here, questions that I've seen lots of people uh, in our Discord and on Twitter asking. First, with these ETFs that are now live, 
why are their prices different than the Bitcoin price? Can you explain the market dynamics there, Kai? Yeah, sure. So one let me, share, a, uh, let me give an example. The Grayscale yeah. ETF opened at $42, just to yeah. use that. So example. one share of the ETF does not equal one Bitcoin, right? Uh, if it did, it would be whatever we're at right now. I don't know, 46000 or something. The last I checked before we clicked record. And the problem is you can't buy... Like if one share was $46,000, most people would be priced out of being able to buy a Bitcoin, right? Because uh, you can't buy pieces of a share in the TradFi world. And so what they've done is it is still a, an exact correlation to Bitcoin. So there is, you know, if there's a billion dollars worth of value in each ETF, they have a billion dollars in underlying asset of Bitcoin and they're buying the, the Bitcoin at spot. But what they've done, and each one will do this differently, is maybe one has a billion shares that represent a billion uh, Bitcoin. Maybe one has 10 billion shares that represents a billion dollars of Bitcoin, or maybe one has 5 million shares that, you know what I mean? Like it can be very different. And so that's why the share price can be much lower, which they want anyway, so that more people can actually buy it. And so with Grayscale being, what is it, $46, that basically means that it's somewhere around, I guess it'd be a hundred shares or a thousand shares. No, a hundred shares would equal one Bitcoin kind of thing. So, but everyone's going to be different. So they'll all be different prices, but they will all go up in correlation together. Now, the weird thing, if you've never invested in an ETF like asset, is remember the markets do close at whatever it is, 4 p.m. And so Bitcoin will still go up or down after the markets. So what will happen is you have to wait till the next morning and all of a sudden it'll correct and like change by whatever's happened in the after hours. So a bit weird when you buy this thing, but overall it'll track it almost perfectly. And most of these have almost no fees, at least for the first few months or first certain amount of volume. But then they're really low. It's like 0 0.2, 0 0.2. It's 3.24. The highest one is Grayscale. So I would not be buying Grayscale. They're like 1.5%, which is way higher than all the others. But it's because they have like, what is it? Two or $3 billion worth of Bitcoin already in it. So they're just printing money off of that. And so, yeah, I wouldn't be buying that one. I'd buy any of the others. What do you expect to come? Are you going to start buying the ETF? Do you think that our listeners will buy the ETF. Who's buying this ETF and what can we, I mean, we've already seen over a billion dollars purchasing it. Any ideas of what we can expect that might happen in the next month, year? Yeah. So I already own the Bitcoin and ETFs, but we've had it in Canada for years. So this was right. a thing that I've, I've had for a while. The reason that I have like most of my crypto is actual crypto self-custody. But the reason I own some in ETF is because I can put it in tax-free savings account and I can sell it and I pay no taxes on it, which is like, amazing when you have an asset that goes up 10x in a number of years, right? And you can put a significant amount of money into it. So I own that. I sold all my Bitcoin spot ETF actually earlier last week and put it all into the ETH spot ETF. My reasoning was I thought that ETH would pump after this. Thankfully, that worked out well. We'll talk about that in just a second. But who's going to buy this? Um, I think many people will. I mean, a lot of crypto natives will for the same reason I just did, which is to save on taxes. So the, the amount of crypto that they hold, a certain percent that they want to sell, why wouldn't you use this? It's lower in fees than even if you were to go buy real crypto on Coinbase. So it makes sense. But really what's going to happen here is every single one of these financial institutions, BlackRock, et cetera, they have a team of advisors that will go and teach all the financial advisors around US, around the US about their product, about this ETF, who will then go and preach this to your grandma, your grandpa, your parents, whoever is putting their money in their retirement savings accounts and say, hey, you should put an allocation into this, just like they do gold and other assets. Same sort of idea. Pension funds, they have been looking to get into this stuff. So pension funds always have a different allocation to a bunch of different assets. They can now put one, two, whatever percent into Bitcoin. So they will be buying many, many, many different funds and institutions that have been wanting to invest this, but haven't been able to because they're not allowed to custody the assets themselves. They, they just, because of regulations, they can't do that. So now they can do it with the ETF because they don't cuss it. Another, like obviously the company does. And so I think there's many, many, many different institutions and people that can now finally buy this and hold it. Now it won't happen all today. It'll happen over time. But I'll show you a chart in a second of what happened with gold when it had its ETF. But I think, yeah, there's many different people that will be able to do this. And I think a lot of demand will come over the next months to years. Amazing. Thanks for that explanation. Okay. Now, this couldn't have all happened without a little bit of drama beforehand. So we got to tell a quick story of what happened on Tuesday, the day before the approval. Okay, so Tuesday, we're all excited. We think maybe it's coming today. And boom, the, the SEC tweets, 
Today, the SEC grants approval for the Bitcoin ETF for, for listing on all registered national security exchanges. The approved ETFs will be subject to ongoing surveillance and compliance measures to ensure continued investor protection. Sounds just like an SEC tweet. There's even a photo of Gary Gensler with a quote from him about the approval. And everyone goes crazy. It's happening. It's live. Uh, 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 not so fast. Okay. That was actually fake. The SEC's Twitter account got hacked within minutes. I think it was like within 20 minutes. Gary Gensler tweets out that the SEC's Twitter account was compromised and an unauthorized tweet was posted. The SEC has not approved the listing and trading of spot Bitcoin, ex spot Bitcoin exchange traded ETF product. Okay, so it was fake. As a result of this, there was massive green candle and then massive red candle. We saw a big spike, big pump, and then a big dump. And here's the best part. Can't make this stuff up. Somebody said, hey, X, can you do an investigation here? There was a lot of speculation that this was a tweet that was scheduled and scheduled wrong and that somebody at the SEC accidentally just pushed the button early. So X went and they did an investigation and they confirmed that the SEC's account was in fact hacked. And even worse, they didn't have two-factor authentication on. Unbelievable. We 100% should hold the SEC accountable for this. It's crazy that they didn't have two-factor authentication on. And this is on top of the fact that the SEC constantly is trying to protect us. Here's a, quote, a tweet from Gary Gensler, October 24th, where he says, this is a reminder to secure your financial accounts as well as protect against identity theft and fraud. He says, remember to set up multi-factor authentication. Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, said that on his Twitter to the whole world. And his own organization has not done that for their own Twitter account. It's truly unbelievable. There was something like a hundred hundred million dollars of longs that were longs and shorts that were liquidated because of that hack and that tweet. I mean, it's crazy that someone in crypto actually hacked the SEC's Twitter account, number one, but also crazy they didn't, you know, take the right precautions. But yeah, a hundred million dollars in liquidations. I think it was even more than that, but pretty extensive. And the results of that is the SEC now will likely have to investigate themselves, which is totally yeah. unprecedented, never happened. But basically their negligence led to a hundred million dollars being liquidated, which that's on them, right? Like they made yeah. that mistake. So they need to take accountability for that. It's just crazy. There's so many hilarious memes that came out as a result of this. I think the best tweet I saw was from John Wu, who said, the Cointelegraph intern walked. So that was, if you guys remember back in December, Cointelegraph intern made a post saying that it was the BTC ETF was approved. That was incorrect. They were wrong. So the Cointelegraph intern walked so the matrix port analyst could run so the SEC social media chief could fly. And <laughs> just a absolute run around. But hey, none of this matters though. now because we got the approval and we can move forward. So now the question is, what do we obsess over next? What's the next deadline? What's the next thing that we can all talk about? Well, that is the ETH ETF approval. And when is that coming? Yeah, I mean, the, the SEC gets no break, that's for sure. They now have to turn to the ETH ETF, which is coming in May. At least that's the next deadline. So we'll see what happens there.